Hello and welcome back. I've got a couple of extra coaches this week on eBay. The, uh, the two at the end of the, the rake there, the green Suburbans, are the new ones, and the, the one closest to the locomotive is one I've had a while. Definitely a little bit beaten, and uh, it's uh, the rust has got at it a little. We'll, we'll have a look at that a bit, a bit later on. Let's give that a little bit of power and see if we can get the, this out and give it the once around. Let's see if we can get a, a nice angle of it coming out of these sidings here. So let's see if we can uh, give that a little bit of power. So I'm standing on a very creaky floorboard there. And that's gonna go out under the elevated section. Let's see if we can follow that along there. So we'll have a look at the workbench in a moment. A number of people have asked me in the last few videos how I've used the relay. So I've got a little bit of a um, a demonstration on the bench, not really a how-to, more of a what I've done. So let's, uh, let's follow this round. So I have used the relays to, uh, to switch the power on this three rail, because these uh, three rail points are, are live in all directions initially. Let's see if we can get this coming around here, and under the elevated section there. Let's give that a gentle stop just out the other end of the station now. So we'll pop the controls down. Let's have a look. Let's just put those there for, for later use. So if we just have a, a quick look at that, I think we'll, uh, we'll pop the other side and we'll have a look at these coaches later on. But that's the, my original one. You can see the roof is quite uh, rusty and beaten up there. And one, one end has definitely had quite, quite a bit of a attack of the rust on it so but I think it'll live another few years in this sort of situation yeah it's still got the the peg here I haven't had the time to uh, do any more 3d printing I've got to sort of lay out the track work and see where the supports are going to go in order to a fresh reel of uh, filament for printing so let's just grab a couple of these uh, Hornby double oak points and, and have a look at uh, why I've used the relays so isolation tracks and so on could be used I think Hornby Double O have uh, sort of in, in their instruction books, track plan books indicate a lot of use of uh, um, isolation tracks and switches and so on. But I've decided to do a little bit with, with relays. Let's just pop these down here and have a quick look what we're up against. So hang on a second, let's just get that in a bit better position. So that's a original manual three rail point. So whichever direction you've got the switch blades, power is fed, fed to that center rail. That's not a particularly smooth running one, that. So it doesn't matter if we've got that set to curve, but there'll still be power going to the straight section there. So the use of isolating tabs and switches was really necessary until the uh, isolating point came along. So if we just uh, pop that one down there and this one here, that's a slightly later point it's got a supplementary switch built into it there so you can direct the power to one outlet or the other so it looks pretty much the same thing on the top I know we're looking at uh, let's put those side by side there we go so I think on the top surface there they, they look pretty much the same but then we've got that just that little switch which works very effectively does need a little bit of cleaning from time to time but um, it's, uh, if they're clean when they go down, they should be good for, for years and years, I imagine. So all of this stuff that came to me was, was remarkably dirty. So um, there's an electric one. Let's have a look at that. Sorry, I just put the, yeah, so there's an electrically operated point from uh, Hornby Double O. I can't remember when these came along, but these never did get the switch to switch the power from one one there branch to the other, so they were constantly live. So irrespective of which way the blades are pointing, um, the power would always be sent to both outlets on the point. So use of isolating tabs would be 100% necessary to get some sort of basic functionality out of the railway. I don't know whether I want to get a focus on that. I've got the lens set up quite wide today. So I'll just put an insert picture in the corner there. That's one of Hornby Double isolating tabs. I think these came in little packets. I, I did want to dig some out, but I must have hidden them away. I can't, can't uh, 
can't find it, well, I'll put a, a drop-in picture there of, a, of that a close-up so you can have a look at it. So the other way of isolating these points, some of them that I've got, because um, they're, all, they're all fairly well-used condition, I had the, um, the wire cut out to isolate them, but then supplementary switching would be needed to get the functionality of the railway there. So I've uh, ended up using, I've, I've shown them in the, in earlier videos on the last railway. I, I started experimenting with them in the lockdown, the, these relays, and then initially I was wiring them in. If you look at the, the, uh, the first, my first efforts at using them, they weren't sort of mounted on a board and they're very cumbersome to use and not very reusable and fragile. So I sort of graduated to sticking them on a, a little bit of, um, what do you call this, uh, matrix board. Initially, the matrix board I had didn't have these sort of copper contact on the back. It's actually uh, nicer to use than this stuff, but uh, availability became an issue when I was sort of getting the things together to make to make these ones up. So I've got those, so it's just a, a slightly different way of working. Well, not that much different. It just makes the solder jump to the, jump to the board a bit more, so. Let's uh, pop that down there. If we have a look at this, um, sorry, I haven't got this planned very well. I want this piece of paper here. I'll put these, these are screenshots at the end so you can have a look at them. So I'm, I'm sure there's many other ways of doing this. This is just in conjunction with reading on the internet the, the way I came up with doing it. And it seems to work quite well on that uh, System 6 railway. You had a lot of these. Um, set in I think um, I had 11 made up in boards like this and I think there were two or three as uh, the the earlier ones that went in were just sort of soldered directly to the relay which you know it's not not the way to go this is much more usable so these have come off the old railway and straight under this railway so you can see you can have uh, you, can, you can go on and off or you can have changeover on either side so it's a twin twin coil latching relay so it stays where it jumps, so you can put it in line with your uh, your point motors. So uh, every one of the uh, the three rail points here now is, is, has one of these introduced into it to give the functionality. And um, that's how I've got the, uh, the colored light signals, so not signals, the indicators. I know we can't see it at the moment. I put a drop in picture and we'll see them in a moment. Um, is going with a, will go. I've got a few hooked up just to test out what I wanted to do, but um, as time moves on, I'll get all, all of that done. So let's just have a, a quick look at this. And again, somebody was asking me about the um, about the LEDs. So here I, I've got one set up. Let me see if I can get this, this switch. So if I throw this switch, so I'll just have a quick look first. So that is just one of those relays there we've just seen the picture of and it's hooked up to there, and there, there is the point switch. So if I, uh, which way around have I got it? If I bring the switch towards me, it should go curved, and then the, uh, the LED should go red. Although it depends how well the camera picks up that red, it, it sort of bleeds out a little bit and goes milky, but it, it is quite a vibrant red. So the, uh, the electric switch is running there. Sorry, that's dropping out of frame. So that's just why the relay is just wired off the point motor wiring. And then uh, one side of it can be used to direct the power. If you have a look at the uh, the insert picture there, you can see that bit of that set of rails on the other way up. And I've just drilled holes through there just because it's on the baseboard. I was just sort of trying to set this up in, in a coherent way so we could have a look at it. So I know I'm not really the, uh, the best at explaining my wiring. But that's that's the the basics of it. So the feed to go to the relay comes from here. So where are we there? That one. So that's the the power in there. And I, I can I can I can uh, decide whether I'm energizing this center rail or this center rail depending on the, how that switches. I found that quite effective. Relatively straightforward. It is time consuming but um, if you have a look at the, the pictures there you in the, in the corner of the screen you can see um, where I've sort of soldering these things together although uh, you know I, I don't think I can get the, 
these close enough to camera to really show them, but uh, I'll leave um, a list of components that I've used uh, in the description box below. I think they're, uh, it's become quite effective. These are just a spacer that I've um, used on the underside. Let's grab another one here. So let's just grab that again. So that's just the, the spacers I've used. I did look at getting some standoff washers off the off the internet, but they're remarkably expensive items. These little terminals make it quite usable. I expect to get a lot of life out of those. So, as I say, the first 11 and have come from the other railway, plus the uh, two or three which were initially wired have all been uh, mounted on boards. Again, the uh, the diodes and the resistors. I'll, I'll leave um, descriptions. So, it, so I'll leave details of those in the description box. Again, this is a, a three-pronged, a three-legged, sorry, um, LED. So I believe you, you can get um, an amber, I think you can get amber out of that as well. I'm not sure, but I've just gone for the, the red and the green. So let's see if we can get in a little bit closer to this one and have a look at it. So again, that's just wired off on the other side there. So we've got the the feed and then the return and then we've got the, the red wire and then, and then the green wire so let me just throw that again so I'm just bashing into the camera there I get the switch the right way around so towards me should make the, the track go curved and the lamp go green uh, red sorry there we go and then back again so I think what I'll do is I'll just get this on the tripod and we'll just uh, drop a meter on it just to illustrate the purposes so I don't know whether I can get all the way up here and we can get this locomotive to uh, to run up the rails there so we'll, we'll switch that the other way so the switch is just out of reach here we'll just grab that so we'll switch that to curved there we go so I've got to swap from one hand to the other here. And that ideally will go onto that curved branch now. So I'd forgotten to mention earlier on that I've got the uh, discharge unit powering up the, uh, the points at the moment and that will also run the relays without a problem. So that's just the one I've been using on the bench and I keep it in a polythene bag, very uh, unelectrically uh, minded here but uh, it stops the short circuit the accidental short circuit so we'll just pop that down and then we'll uh, we'll have a, a go on the railway here as it were the, the small tabletop railway so we'll just give this a run over the over the point work again so it's set for curved we can see the, the red lamp there so if we give that a little power and we'll just uh, roll that forward should have put buffers on either end really there we go so that that runs nicely through there and if we set this for straight now so we'll get the switch for straight and we can see the, the points and the light go there we go and then we'll just give that some power again so we'll just roll that forward and then we'll roll it back again so I think what we'll do we'll just whip this off carefully and we'll, we'll pop it over here We'll just pick up the, uh, whoops, I've just knocked something off there. So at the moment, so if we're set for straight, so we've got, we'll put a probe on there and one on, on this rail here on the point. So we've got continuity there, but we don't have it on the, uh, the curved section there. So if I just uh, switch that to curved now, get my arm out of the way of the, the switch, we've gone to red. Now, so I put my uh, the probe back on here, so we should have continuity on the curved side there. So I can't quite hold that in place. There we have it. So you get the idea, and uh, and that one's now isolated. So there we go. So I thought we'd just show that. So I'll leave the the the, the, um, the part numbers uh, from the store I get most of these things from in the description box below. But obviously the, these could easily be used on the um, on the two rail as well so I don't know whether I can get that in into shot there 
and turn that over. It's not a very good good look at that, but uh, yeah, I, I found them very, very useful. I'm sure there are many other ways of achieving the same, the same result, but this is just what I've decided to do. So here we are on the other side of the railway, and these, this is the sort of board I put in to test my thinking and see if I could get this to run how I wanted it. So here we go, we'll, we'll make this point straight. So that was the, uh, the point which uh, let the locomotive onto the, onto the main line earlier on, number one, just hiding on the corner of the elevated section there. So that's now sort of cut off all the power running through that lot there. So it sort of feeds it sequentially into whichever siding. So it originally came from that one there. Uh, there is an isolating rail there, which I, th I think there's one of these isolating rails I haven't hooked up yet. I've lost track. There's still quite a, quite a bit to do. But um, yeah, so color light signals easily um, achievable with these as well. Uh, the last railway had a number of color light signals uh, all, all run via the relays. So very useful items. I say that there is uh, pl plenty of other ways to do this, I imagine, but this is just the way I've chosen. And it seems to work out quite well. I was pleased with it last time around, and I've been very pleased with what I've managed to achieve this time around. So I think we've got uh, one more point to attend to, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get that locomotive on the, on the run there. We'll just pan around here slowly. So uh, more work has gone on here. So I've got the, the cabling all in for all three of those points which remained undone there. But uh, I've got uh, relays all plumbed in and ready to use with these. Um, and these are wired up to switches. This is all unpowered at the moment. So um, I don't know whether we can have a quick look underneath. So the, uh, this one isn't hooked up. These ones are hooked up, but uh, I'm not gonna fire those up. Perhaps we'll look at those next time around. So again, you can see the, the relays have gone in underneath there and the functionality of those will, will come on board as time moves on. So it is, as I said, it is, it is slow work, but uh, it's quite rewarding. So no, it's not those ones. So again, we'll have indicators running with all of those eventually when we get the, the boards all, all sorted out nicely. So this is point number 12, I think I need to, to sort out over here. So this one just needs to go straight. There we go. And then we'll, uh, pan around here, we'll, we'll get the power. So, sorry, I'm running away there. So let's go a little closer over here. Again, still boxes and stuff, dancing around, stuff on the floor all over the place. So let's give this a little bit of power now. So away we go. mess still lying on the railway but it's stuff that's all in use while the, uh, the development of the railway is going on so we'll just run that around again I've walked into the box and that's going to pop under the elevated section now through the station Let's just stay wide now and let that come around the room. And I'll just bring this up to a point and we'll just pinch a couple of those coaches off and have a, have a swift look over them. There we go. Let's, um, let's pinch a couple of those off. Let's just pinch all of them off. So that, that's my original one. And that's a new to me one. And that's a new to me one. So let's just have a, a swift look over those. So that's a, what I think is a break. It's a lovely tin plate, plastic wheels. So we've got a metal coupling on there. So 
so no no seating in these but uh, they are glazed can we get to focus on there I'm too close there we go deceptive with the lens set this wide so uh, yeah I was quite pleased with that let's see if we can get, get another one there in the light I'll get that one in definitely being played with again plastic wheels and metal couplings and the one I originally had which has all gone rusty you've got uh, names under there I think we've got Meccano at this distance I can't read that let's see Hornby made in England Meccano limited Liverpool so yeah I have to go to look over the top of the camera to read that and uh, over the top of my glasses all the wrong distances at play there so I'm going to pop that down and uh, let me just grab this other one from the other side of shot here so this was my original it has the plastic wheels but it's got plastic couplings on this one so probably a, la a later one let's see yeah so it's uh, definitely all a bit bubbly with rust upon the end there isn't it and the roof has definitely been uh, in and out of the toy box a few times well I think they're they're quite lovely things. I think these came on along late 50s originally. And the, uh, the 262, sorry, the 264 tank loco, which we've seen in a number of videos before, I think came along in the, in the mid 50s. So a lovely locomotive. So uh, I'll leave a link to an earlier video of that if you want to have a closer look at that one. So let's just have a, a grab of this catalogue. I thought we'd just have a, a swift look over this catalogue. I think we'll we'll call it a day there, just because there was a couple of interesting items I thought we should probably look at. Let's just um, grab those. So let's uh, just flick through that. I think this is the Book of Trains, the Hornby Double O Book of Trains, and it's got the. This is 1959. I should have put a marker in here. So let's just come up a little higher here. Great to cut away there. So, so this has got the, the, the suburban coaches. Let's uh, flick through to these. So these, uh, I think these are these chocolate and cream type coaches here. I actually did order a couple of these off uh, eBay, uh, won them at a very low price, but sadly the, the seller has not shipped them. So getting on for 12 days now, I think. So um, it, was, it was quite a shame really, I was hoping to get those. I think we're gonna have to go for a refund via eBay and, and uh, just look for another couple. So I didn't have any of those tin plate chocolate and creams. So there's that, uh, those coaches, and then with, with one of those uh, two rail um, I think it's an R1, isn't it? A plastic bodied locomotive, sort of an en entry level locomotive that uh, Hornby Double brought along. And you've got a lovely picture here with, a, with a, is that three of those locomotives pulling a rake of coaches. What it looks like, looks like uphill. So um, let's just um, flick through a little bit more. It wasn't my intention to go all the way through this, but. Uh, there's another lovely cutaway there, look at that. So that, uh, that diesel locomotive, is that a, a class 20? My uh, knowledge of locomotives is very poor, as we all know, but I do have one of these, a three rail variant version of that. So we will get that out, it requires a little bit of work. Let's, um, let's find the page with the coaches on. I'm going to be defeated by this, aren't I? There we go. That was the uh, page I was looking at. So this sort of range of tin plate coaches. And this is probably, possibly, just before the uh, the super detail ones came along. I, I may be wrong there, but there, there's the uh, the green suburbans there. And then we've got the uh, the maroon ones. I think we've seen those running on the railway a lot earlier. So yeah, I've got. I've got a restaurant in the uh, chocolate and cream and a uh, 
and a break, but what I was after was a, as a couple of um, just coaches to uh, make up the rake. I, I do have some super detail ones, but uh, I think I actually prefer running the, the shorter coaches, and uh, I think they, they, they probably look better as items on, on the railway. I've uh, got the, oops, I'm dropping the camera here. So it's just, uh, I've had it resting on something and it's just uh, slipped. So that was that, that was the interesting thing in there. And then uh, there's this little, little book here. And again, there was an interesting little thing here. So I don't know how we can, uh, whether we can get up close there. So there's an, like a joiner there. So you could throw two switches together. So you, you could throw a point switch and a colored light signal together, or I suppose you, you could throw an, an isolating track. Um, so that would be a way of throwing two together to get over some of the, the wiring or the, the functionality problems with uh, some of this point work. But it, make, it makes for interesting uh, playtime uh, making these things uh, come together. But it, it's all part of the fun. It's definitely different than the, than the, uh, the two rails sitting next to it. But I think that's probably about it for this week. If you look back again next time, We'll uh, have something else to have a look at. Goodbye now.